This screencast is going to do the very basics of getting some data out of the YouTube API. And we're going to be using this API here, um, created by someone named Martin Legris. And we're going to see the very basic code for just getting some data out and um, out of the API. And we're going to uh, base it on this article where he actually has an article now that's part of the official uh, Google code. Uh, Google API developer documents really for Flash. So uh, in it, he asked that first you go and you get his API. So you would download the API here, um, which I've already done and included in the start files that you have. Um, if we look at those uh, start files here, let's expand this. So in those start files, you're going to have uh, the Flash file, an action script file that we're starting with. The CA file is all of his files, uh, CA, New Commerce, uh, and all these things that he has here. Uh, and these have all the YouTube uh, files in them. And in a com file, there's some Adobe things that he uses to, to get this, to help him get the data out of YouTube. All right, so those are the files that we're starting with and what you don't have to download. So, um, what we're going to do is go back and forth a little bit between uh, this tutorial and what we're doing. But first I want to show you uh, Flash and what I've set up so far. So, so far um, I've done the imports. These are on what he uses to get the data out of YouTube. So those are his API. Uh, this is the Adobe one that just helps him serialize some data the way that YouTube sends the data back and forth. Um, and then these are just some flash imports that I use. We're not using actually all of them right now, uh, but we will use some later on. So just leaving these imports in, uh, we'll, we'll look at later how they work. So the class is called YouTube API. And for now, we're starting with one property, which is client, which is going to be our YouTube client. Okay. And now what we want to do is, is uh, create a new instance of this client and get some data from YouTube. So... Um, that was the import statement. Here is uh, creating the client. Uh, so I'm just going to make a sort of separate line here uh, equals YouTube client get instance. So in ours, uh, I'm going to start that here. So our client equals YouTube client get instance. All right. And we usually, you know, when I'm doing stuff like that, especially when I'm importing a lot of different um, classes, I just run it and make sure I don't get any errors. Oh, yeah, I forgot to uh, mention in Flash, it's basically a blank screen, but it has these two items in it. It's a text field, and this is a data grid property. Um, and a data grid is what we're going to use to display our data eventually in there. But for now, we're just going to trace it out and make sure we can. So... We got our instance. Uh, now let's look at the, the next step in it. So we want to make a request from the client. So remember, when we're working with all these APIs, you create an instance of the API, then you make some kind of request on it. Uh, so let's copy this code here. Um, oh, I forgot the C. So client, and then I'm going to just pull these down to, to one line to save a little bit of space. Um, so what what we have here is um, a request and it has some parameters on it. What this request is for is to get some of the top rated videos. Um, so it's um, getting the feed, which feed it's getting, it's top rated. Um, and it's using YouTube client time month to say like rated over what time, the last week, the last month and so forth. Uh, and a couple other parameters uh, we have here, which I'm going to uh, hold off on for now. So that's going to uh, do the get standard feed. Now that's fine. It'll run. Uh, we're not going to have any errors necessarily. Um, but um, there's uh, right now we get this standard feed loaded, uh, but we need to uh, have an actual handler to trace that out. So that's what we want to do next. Uh, that, that comes uh, somehow as part of his API. But what we want to do is actually handle the results. So remember, the usual three steps that you almost always have to do are you create an instance of your API, you call a method of the API, and then you add an event listener for that method and an event um, 
handler as well. So let's add the event listener. So I'm put some comments here. Call method um, YouTube API. And then we're going to add a listener for that. So now when that method returns some data, we'll get it. So we're going to do normal, uh, you know, add event listener. Um, uh, oops, keep the comment in there. Just when you're copying from that website, we need to take a little rid of some of the spaces. So standard video feed event. This is an event type of the YouTube API that we're using here. Uh, standard video data received. So that's when the data received. And we're going to call a method uh, do videos received. So uh, now we need that uh, function for that, right? So now we know we need a, a private function. So you guys should be used to writing this too. Do videos received. Uh, our event type is going to be the standard video feed event. OK. Uh, and it doesn't return anything, so void. Okay, so let's just do a trace right now. Got videos uh, feed and see if it runs. And we do. So we had got video feed. Great. So the next thing we want to do is um, get some information out of that feed. So that's what it's going to be next. Um, here's what we're going to look at. He's going to have us trace out the title, the URL, view count, comment count, video duration, author's name, and I'm going to add one of those to that too that we're going to need. So he has a whole bunch here. I'm going to copy this a little bit piece, uh, piece by piece um, here, also because I changed slightly his event. So the first one is to get a reference to the feed containing the videos, and I just I made it as E, so. I have to keep changing this. If you're following along directly, you may want to keep it as EVT as your um, event type uh, here. Uh, let's uh, while we're at it, let's close that. Okay. Um, I'm gonna tidy this up a bit. All right, so. This feed is a video feed, and a video feed has a list of videos in it. We'll see later that a lot of stuff gets returned as a video feed, and it makes it useful because we can write one function that can um, display different types of feeds, whether they're a video search or list of the you know top rated or whatever. So that's the first part. We're getting a reference to the feed. It's in part of the event handler. And then we're going to create a variable to hold the data. This is, um, as we've seen before, we've done this before, it's just... Um, for the purposes so we don't have to keep writing you know feed uh, dot something dot, dot something so um, and also we'll see here the way he set it up he has a special way of looping through his very his data so that's just the second part this is going to hold the data on uh, th each video and then he has a special while loop here so I'm just going to copy that out so it's it's a while um, oops I forgot to close that off all right, so um, well, video equals feed next. So the, the feed has a next method that just gets the next video in the feed and 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 moves on. So you can set up this while loop um, that works on his video feed uh, data type. Remember, this is created by him, Martin Legris, uh, and it will loop through them all. And I'm just going to do a simple trace here, and then we'll run through and do something more. So trace. Uh, video. So we're going to run through that and see how that works. So there we go. And now we see we got all these videos. So here's how many videos were in that feed. And I think we listed uh, 10 as one of our parameters. And that's why we have 10 videos here. So if we look here, uh, this number uh, gives us that. I think if we uh, increase that number, we should get more videos. I can't remember if they have a, a limit on how many you can get. Uh, we went over the maximum uh, amount, so you can't get more than 10. I forgot that uh, um, that you can't. So let's just leave it at 10 for now. Um, 
and we'll have to look at the documentation on that later. Okay, so there we go. We got our video feed, uh, and now we want to trace out some data for each video. So I'm just going to trace um, one of them out here. So this is the title of the video. And so now it should trace each title. So there we go. So we got video, and then video title, like that. All right, um, so that's cool, um, and I'm just going to pull out the next ones that he has, just copy all of those up. Uh, so here we go, copy that, and whoops, this trace didn't get a, two comments on it, there we go, and let's run this again. So there we go. So we get the title, the URL, the view count, the comment count, the duration, the author. So we're getting all this video information on each of the videos. All right, so I'm going to stop this tutorial here. It's the basic way you do it. You could have a lot of different ways you might actually want to um, display this out. We've done that um, with some of the different APIs in class. Uh, and the next one, we're going to move on to showing this in the data grid.